The real profit to be made in robbing banks is if you're the bank doing the robbing. As soon as you give a bank your money, they create fees so they don't have to give it back. So if you deposit $5, they'll create a $5 fee for only having $5. <laughs> they'll call it a low amount fee. You should have had six. Of course, then it would be a $6 fee. This is a good system, if you're a bank. When I was a kid, banks used to give you toasters, and every time you opened an account, they wanted your business. They treated their customers like customers. Of course, there was more regulation and more competition back then. With all the bank mergers going on now, soon there will be just the Fed and one big commercial bank with an investing subsidiary left standing, neither of which our government will control. Nowadays, banks treat their customers like a teat to be milked. <laughs> they are to be raped and pillaged. Customers are something banks tolerate. Customers are to be exploited. If they're dumb enough to pay one fee, maybe they'll pay two. And meanwhile, the bank will be gambling with your money. Every time I go into a bank, I expect the teller to pull out a gun and say, Stick em up! <laughs> they charge interest rates larger than Louis the Loan Shark and break you if you fail to repay in ways that Louis can only dream about. There are no usury laws. Who needs them? Bank lobbyists have managed to re-legislate most of the 1933 Banking Act, except for FDIC insurance. They like that. <laughs> After all, if they're going to gamble with depositors' money, somebody has to pay for it. Now J.P. Morgan Chase is on their way to losing $2.5, maybe $3 billion. They call it hedging because if they called it what it really was, it would be illegal. <laughs> <laughs> if only we'd let them regulate themselves. They wouldn't break any more laws because there wouldn't be any. I'm James Tripp, and I'll be back with another Trippatorial.